us where we have more help in our situations and conditions. But you make us where you are to take them to your
The prayer of the six star of this blessed day we offer to Christ our King, Lord God, beseech you to forgive us our many sins from the songs of our teacher David the prophet and the King. May his blessings be upon us all. Amen. I go to the Father, 
for my father is greater than I, and I am not, and now I have told you before it comes to pass. When it comes to pass, you might believe I will not talk much with you, for the peace of the prince of this, uh, this world comes as nothing to me, that, that the world may know that I am of the Father, and the Father gave me commandments, so I do arise, let us go from here. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes and may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you by me and I knew. And glory be to God forever. Amen. And the sins of God be fulfilled in peace. We worship you, O Christ, with your good Father and Holy Spirit. We have come and saved us and mercy on us, your Holy Spirit, O Lord. We set forth upon your holy disciples and your honored apostles in the third hour. Do not take them with us, every one. But we bring you within us, we in the heart of God, and in your right spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. O Lord, send down your Holy Spirit upon your only disciples, your honor, and apostles, and third hour, do not take away from us, good one. But we ask that you renew within us, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the Word, the right and life, the Spirit, the Spirit of prophecy and chastity, the Spirit of holiness, righteousness, and authority. O the Almighty One, for you are the light of our souls, and you light to everyone that comes into the world of mercy on us. For the salvation of our souls, blessed is the Lord our God, blessed is the Lord day by day. He prepares our way, peace God of our salvation. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, and spread to everyone in all places, and fills all the treasure of good things, and the life giver gracious to come and dwell in us, purify us of all the fun one good one, and save our souls. Just as you are one your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace graciously, come also and be with us, grant us your peace, save us, and deliver our souls. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, indeed consider us those standing in heaven, O Mother of God, you are the gate of heaven, open for us the door of mercy. Holy God, holy Mother, holy Lord, 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 Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, visit the sick of your people and heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers and brethren will fall asleep. O Lord, repose their souls. O you without sin, Lord, have mercy on us. O you without sin, Lord, help us and receive our supplications. Your glory, the dominion, the triple holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Make us worthy, O Lord, to pray things we are flawed. Lord, Lord, to heaven, hallelujah. So, see what feels in one holy, 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 holy gospel of my entire teacher. Same that he may his blessings be upon us all, amen. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and told them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in the heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. 
that are those who are persecuted for the righteous mercy, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, then they, when they reveal you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so they were executed the prophets who were before you. You are a salt of earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled up under food by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill. There cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on lamp stand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Let us sing now be fulfilled in peace. We worship you, O Christ, with your good Father and Holy Spirit. Pray God, come and save us and mercy us. We are six days and six hours. Was nailed to the cross for the sin which our Father had and there to the paradise to heaven and hide in the mercies of Christ our God and save us. I cry to God and the Lord heard me, O God, hear my prayer and do not refuse my petition. Be attentive to me. Hear me in the evening, in the morning, and at midday. I say my words, and he hears my voice and delivers my soul in peace. Lord Jesus Christ our God, who was nailed to the cross in the sixth hour, I could say, but I should be my heart to be alive
market or have PC and other systems in the same business in Berkeley. If I'm not really thinking as someone of my seat, I want to think about some of the much better emphasis. And from a long run, while the beach are up above the others, the second is part of the beach, I'm going to follow the beach, use it. And from my own mapping, at least for us, I'm going to look forward to the video.
Lord Jesus Christ called to be an apostle appointed to the gospel of God, the chapter from the epistle of Peter, St. Paul to the Romans, whose blessings be upon us all in heaven. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. And he might be the first from firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, he, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all these things? Who shall bring a charge against God tonight? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is, God, it is Christ who died, and furthermore it is, is also risen. Who, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine, or nakedness or peril? or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, yet in, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The grace of God the Lord is with you. Amen. The Catholic Epistle from the first epistle of our teacher, St. Peter, his blessings be upon us all, amen, my beloved. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For he, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walk in licentiousness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers, and above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift, minister to it, minister it to one another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do not love the world, nor the things which are in the world. The world shall pass away in all its desires. But he who does the will of God shall abide for every man. Hail to you.
blessings be with us all. Amen. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to their magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house, and he took them at the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. The word of the Lord shall grow, multiply, be mighty, and be confirmed in the Holy Church of God. Amen. On this day, the commemoration of the martyrdom of the 30,000 Christians in the city of Alexandria, when an emperor Marcianus banished Pope Dioscorus, the 25th patriarch of Alexandria, to the island of Gagra. He appointed Proterios, a patriarch, in his place. The bishops of Egypt refused to have a fellowship with him. They assembled a council against him, the Council of Chalcedon, and the tomb of Leo. Proterios was enraged and attacked the government forces, the monasteries, and churches in Alexandria. He plundered and confiscated their funds and contents, and he became wealthy. Thieves attacked him during the night, killed him, and stole what he had. The Chalcedonians sent to the emperor, saying, the followers of Dioscorus were the one who killed the patriarch that was appointed by the emperor. The emperor became furious and sent a number of his soldiers who killed about 30,000 Christians in the city of Alexandria. Thus, they received the crown of martyrdom. The blessing of their prayers be with us all. Amen. On this day, also, Saint Ninian was martyred in the city of Antioch. When the persecution was incited against the Christians, the saint went and confessed the Lord Christ before the governor of Antioch. He tormented him with severe tortures. However, God healed, comforted, and strengthened him. When the governor was weary of torturing him, he ordered to behead him, thus he received the crown of martyrdom. The blessing of spirit be with us all, and glory be to God forever. Amen.
Joseph But before all these things, we will lay their hands on you and persecute you, 
delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. This trial that he's saying that we will go through, this uh, you know, this persecution, he says it turns out as an occasion for testimony. Very often in our lives, we look up to the saints that came before us. We look up to the martyrs. We look up to the uh, monks and nuns. We look up to the patriarchs. We look up to those who confess the faith. Like today in the, in the Saint Serum, we, we read about the 30,000 who defended the faith and stood by Saint Dioscoros and didn't just cave in to whatever the Council of Chalcedon said. They stood by their faith, and because of that, they suffered and they were persecuted. And they, and and they shed their blood for the love of their faith and for the love of Christ himself. And so very often we look up to them, but we are unwilling to do what they did. We are unwilling to maybe suffer a little like they did. Maybe not physically, but just generally speaking. St. Ephraim talks about this admiration that we have. St. Ephraim is Syrian. He talks about this admiration that we have for the saints. And he says, we do well to admire the blessedness of the saints and desire to be crowned as they are. But we are unwilling to imitate their labors and combats. Do you think that they were crowned without labors and afflictions in the same manner as you desire to be? Will you hear what kind of rest the saints had in this life? Some of them were tortured. This is the rest that they had. This is the, the repose that they had. Some of them were tortured. Others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yes, even more of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Lo, you have heard of a few particulars out of many. Such were the accommodations and repose of the saints in this life. And they bore these things with all joy, because they looked for those eternal good things which are laid up for them in the heavens, which eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. This is St. Ephraim's meditation on the labors of the saints. He's telling us, we do well to admire them, but are we willing to do a little bit to rest the way they rested. He's maybe being a little bit sarcastic in, in what he's calling rest. He's telling us, you want to, to be crowned like they are while resting, while laying on your couch or on your bed, and, you know, being comfortable. But he's saying, look at what kind of rest they had. And he lists the persecutions and all these things that they went through. Are we willing to labor as they did? In the Gospel today, the Lord tells us that if we do labor, it turns out as, a, as an occasion for testimony. Our labor, again, doesn't have to be in the form of persecution. It doesn't have to be in a physical form of where we feel like we have to shed our blood. We feel like maybe, but so far, and at least in this country, it's not like this. But we may labor in prayer. We may labor in our scriptural readings. We may labor in our life of repentance and struggle against sin. We may labor in focusing on the heavenly rather than the earthly. These are all things that we struggle with in our day-to-day -day lives. We want to be like the saints, but we lose focus. We lose focus because we focus on the earthly. We're focused on you know, our work, our families, our money. And sure, we need to do all these things, but without losing focus on our real objective. And so, do we labor in prayer? I'll just mention a few things quickly. In Acts chapter 16, this is the, the reading of Acts today, it starts off, now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain state girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us. So, the apostles are walking, and they're going to pray. This is their life. They're living a life of prayer. They're laboring in prayer. And when they get arrested and thrown into prison, what does it say? It says that, Peter and, and Silas, uh, Paul and Silas, sorry, were in prison. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and then we know the rest of the story, that the prison doors were open, and so on. 
This was even in the midst of their tribulation, even in the midst of their imprisonment, Paul and Silas are praying. And it says the other prisoners were listening to them. So their life of prayer, their struggle, their labor, turns out as an occasion of testimony for those around them in prison. When we live a life of prayer, when we commit to laboring in prayer, each one of us individually in our own personal homes, then it turns out an occasion of an occasion for testimony, maybe for the rest of my family. When they see that on a daily basis, they know that mom and dad wake up a little bit early. Why mom do you wake up so early? Because I have to pray. I have to speak to God. It becomes an opportunity for them to learn from you. When they see in the evening that there's not a single night you go to bed without picking up scripture, sitting at the Lord's feet and saying, Lord, speak to me as you spoke to your servant Samuel. Speak to me so and so for your servant listens, for your servant hears. Then my child, or my spouse even, will, will notice this. And they will begin maybe wanting to do the same thing. It turns out as an occasion of testimony. And so struggling in prayer, laboring in prayer, is one way to imitate the saints. Laboring and reading scripture, is one way to imitate the saints. Laboring in our repentance is another way to imitate the saints. In the Catholic epistle today, we read, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. We spent enough time doing the wrong, We've spent enough time following the world. We've spent enough time sinning. And so let me struggle against sin. Let me struggle in the life of repentance. And when I do, it will turn out as an occasion of testimony. Because they will see that I no longer run with them in the same flood of dissipation, as the Catholic Epistle tells us today. And so this life of repentance requires struggle. It requires that on a daily basis I sit with myself in the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, examine me. Lord, reveal to me what I've done wrong today. Lord, reveal to me where I missed the mark, where I did wrong. And also, Lord, reveal to me where you wanted me to do good and I did not do it, for I know it is also sin. So we sit on a daily basis and it requires, again, labor, despite the fact that I'm tired. Despite the fact that I worked all day, despite the fact that I had to cook for my family, despite the fact that maybe I had to do services for the church, I still come back home at night and I have to stand and say, Lord, examine me and spend time examining myself. Yes, labor and repentance. Labor and repentance and you will find change in your life. And I'll say the last one at the end of this gospel. It says, in your patience, possess your souls. Labor and patience. Labor and patience in knowing that, okay, in this life, we want things immediately. We're used to like instant gratification. I want, you know, I want to go to a fast food restaurant and make an order. If the order is not ready under 60 seconds, I can make a complaint and so on. If my phone or my internet at home is slower than, you know, two seconds to load, I call the internet company and I say, hey, it used to be one second, what's going on? And I'm complaining about all these things because the culture and the society around me got me used to everything has to be done fast. But in the spiritual life there is struggle and it takes time to see fruit. It takes time for me to be able to acquire the love and taste of prayer. It takes time for me to love and sit at the feet of my Lord Jesus Christ. It takes time for me to, to love, to not, or, or sorry, but it takes time for me to stop loving sin and to love God himself and good itself. Because sin has a taste in it, it is pleasurable for us. And so we look through it and we say, well, I like it, it's, it's familiar, it's what I'm used to, it's, it provides instant pleasure. But no, I need to labor in patience and realize there is pleasure with God. There is pleasure in St. Gregory of Nisa, one of the translations of his uh, homily or his writing on virginity. One part, one translation, in one part it says, God is not pain, he is pleasure. God is pleasure, he's not pain, 
It seems painful to let go of sin. It seems painful to stand every day in prayer. It seems painful every day to do such and such and such things. But God is not pain. And I need patience in order to realize that God is pleasurable. Pleasurable. Being in His presence is pleasurable. I'll end with one story. St. John Vanier was a Catholic saint. And uh, he used to notice that every morning, he would, when, whenever the church was empty, there was this peasant, this farmer, who would come before work and sit for about half an hour in one of the pews, kneel down, and just stare at the altar. And then in the evening after work, that same man would come back, same pew, church is empty, nobody there. And he would sit there and spend about two hours every evening. Same thing, just kneeling down and staring at the altar. And so one day, this Catholic Saint Jean Vanier went to this man and he said to him, what do you do? Nobody's in church, there's no prayer going on. You're kneeling down, what do you say to him? What are you saying, what are you praying? He said to him, I don't say anything to him, and he doesn't say anything to me. I simply look at him, and he looks at me, and we are happy. Being in God's presence, to attain that pleasure of being in God's presence, uh, presence takes patience. So labor in patience. And so let us labor like the saints. As St. Saint Ephraim the Syrian tells us, it is good that we admire their blessedness and their, their being crowned. And we want to be crowned like them, but it requires that we labor. It requires that we labor in some of the things we can labor in. Labor in prayer, labor in your scriptural reading, labor in your life of repentance, labor in being patient, knowing that there will be fruit and that you will change, but it requires time. And to our God be the glory now and ever and unto the end of all ages. Amen. Blessed are they.
Jesus Christ. You have filled the earth with heavenly peace, by which the host of angels glorify you, saying, Glory to God in the highest peace on earth, and goodwill to all Lord men. Pray for perfect peace, love in the holy apostolic greetings. Lord,
in remembrance of me. This is also true. Those who are in the underwater 
truth to them, God, and to all the church, your shepherd, your flock, and peace. From the Lord, you are taught, seek him in streets and deacons. For he commands priests, deacons, subdeacons, and the seven orders of the church of oh, 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 God. Lord, have mercy. And all the servants and all those who are virginity, in the purity of all your faithful people. Lord, have mercy upon us.
the cross bearers, our Father of John the Hegeman, our righteous Father of Bishmoy, the perfect man, the beloved of our good Savior. Our Father of Paul of the Lord, Ezekiel, the disciple of our Lord, our Roman Father, Saints Maximus and Demetrius, the forty nine martyrs, the elders of Shepi, the strong saint of Moses, John Kemi, the priest, our Father of Daniel, the Egyptian, our Father of Zenor, the priest, our Father of the Colonial Theodore, his disciple. Our Father, which knew that the arch majority of the Holy his disciple, and all the martyr saints, through his prayers and supplications, have mercy on us all, and save us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon Let's 